At APG Software Solutions, we build fully functional MVPs, often in as little as four to eight weeks. No, that is not clickbait, we actually do it. And in this video, I'm gonna share the processes that we've learned over years of building custom software to allow us to develop and deliver apps in this time frame. To give you some background, my name's Adam. I'm a co-founder at APG Software Solutions, which is a software development company, and I'm also a no-code and AI enthusiast. Over the past four years of freelancing and also developing this agency, I've handed over 60 applications over to clients. And through that process, I learned all these repetitive tasks that we kept doing over and over again and developed a process that allowed us to build apps much quicker in as little as four to eight weeks. Today, I'm going to share this process with you. Now, before I kick this off, I wanna let you know that our agency predominantly uses no-code tools to deliver the solutions for our clients. Now, every project is different, and sometimes we use a variety of different services to get the solution that the client's looking for, but make.com and bubble are two no-code or low-code tools that we use in the majority of our projects. In this video, I'll be talking about the custom software development side of our business and using Bubble to build these solutions. If you're interested in learning more about Bubble, I jump into more detail on what it is and how you can use it on my channel. We like it because whilst it makes things like building UIs for pages a lot quicker, it's not too simple that it limits customizability in the long term. You still have full control to create workflows, manage your backend, connect with API services, and all of that kind of stuff. The knock-on effect of this is that you can build apps rapidly and often hand them over up to 10 times quicker than traditional solutions. Whilst every software approach has its pros and cons, we've found Bubble is particularly effective for internal tools and for founders looking to build and validate a market quickly. We've all heard the stats about how 90% of startups fail in the first five years, but to dive a little bit deeper under the hood, 34% fail because of a lack of product market fit and a further 16% fail because of cost limitations. Now with Bubble, we can build you an MVP in as little as four to eight weeks and it costs you about 10 to 20K. That's a lot cheaper than most traditional dev shops. I don't think I really need to explain the many benefits of rapid app development to you, but having built many apps and seeing what's successful and what's failed, speed really is crucial to a successful product. The ability to launch a fully functional MVP this quickly allows you to validate your product in the market in as little as eight weeks and iterate on that valuable user feedback to make sure you're not wasting time and money building features that your users don't even want. This might sound silly, but you would be surprised how many founders I've seen for thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars down the drain on features that haven't even been tested by one paying user. The easiest selling point for no-code tools like Bubble is the speed in which you can develop an app, iterate on the customer feedback, and actually develop an MVP that solves a problem and actually has subscribing users. Now it's worth mentioning, every app is different. There's certain apps which just have too much complexity to build in four to eight weeks. But the apps that I'm really talking about here are your standard apps, your internal tools, your CRMs, your dashboards, your basic SaaS products and stuff like that. Couple integrations, usually with Stripe and SendGrid for your mail and those kind of things. It's the simple standard apps, which honestly a good 80% of the jobs that come through our door are. Another thing we do with clients is often they come through and they bring 10, 20 features and all these nice haves. The whole point of MVP development, and this will save you a lot if you're developing apps for clients, is to try and convince them to strip this down to the absolute bare bones or core product, because all these extra features, they're not tested in the market, and it just pushes the time that we have to deliver this project further and further back. We can always add these stages into a stage two, stage three MVP, but that first stage MVP, we wanna to ship to market as soon as possible. But to get back to the point, how do we build these apps in four to eight weeks? The secret lies in pre-built frameworks that we've developed over the process of building these 60 apps in the last four years. These frameworks include many of the core components pre-built that are really in the center of 90% of the apps we build. Some of these components include authentication, so user sign up, user login flows, email 2FA verification, social sign on, all of that kind of stuff. Again, we also have admin dashboards. A lot of these SaaS products, the owners wanna log into an admin dashboard and actually see key stats within their application. And then on top of that, we also have common API integration. So at the moment, OpenAI is trending a lot. So is Stripe, that's very common. So is SendGrid for mail. So is Zero for accounting and so on. As we do more and more third-party integrations for clients, we add these into the UI kit so that we already have pre-built API connections set up next time we go to build a project. 
I'm going to jump in and show you what this UI kit looks like in a second. But the other thing we've been focusing on recently is actually a Figma kit to match with this bubble UI kit. So we have very basic styles set up in the UI kit, but the way we have it working is you upload the branding guidelines. So these include your fonts or your color styles and all that kind of stuff into bubble. And so we actually rebuild this app and when we deliver it for a client, it completely looks and feels like the Figma kit that we built off. And before we jump into the UI kit in Bubble, I'm gonna quickly talk about Figma and how that works with our UI kit. At our agency, every app we build is designed first in Figma. We found there's so many benefits for doing this, and to be honest, I don't have time in this video to talk you through the many benefits, but it has serious time and cost savings if you do it correctly. What I'll do first is jump into this bubble kit, show you around in there and how we have that set up. And then I'll talk about the Figma kit that we're building to contemplate this bubble kit so that hopefully we can transfer the designs that we have in Figma into Bubble a lot quicker. If you've used Bubble before, this will look pretty familiar, but if you haven't, I think you'll still understand the crux of what I'm trying to explain here as I show you around within this app. Top here, you can see all of the pages that are within the app. So we have all of our pages here, such as our admin page, our landing page, and our sign up login pages, but we also have a lot of reusable elements, which are basically elements that are used multiple times throughout your application. You can see here we have authentication, which handles all of your sign up and login flows, but we also have CRUD pop-ups to handle all of your CRUD operations, different footers, footers you can use, delete pop-ups, which are likely to be used multiple times throughout your application, and all of those kind of things. As well as that, in our API connector here, you can see we've got a various API set up. Now we're looking to add a lot more to this as we continually build more apps, but the basics in here are SendGrid, Postmark, and Stripe. So what this looks like is essentially we have a bunch of pre-built API calls here, which are already set up. And all we need to do is input the user's private keys or API keys for Stripe to get these working throughout the app. But to complement this kit, we have full documentation, which we publish on Gitbook. And the purpose of that is not just so I can understand what's happening, but any developer that works at APG or uses this kit can understand how it's set up. Because it's likely to get more and more complex as we add more API integrations, more UI elements and stuff like that, it's important that naming conventions and all those kind of things are defined clearly in some documentation somewhere. <clears throat> it's probably also the easiest way for me to explain to you how this actually works. So we have some documentation on a startup guide, which happens every time we duplicate this template to create a new app for a client. But we also have some syntax, which includes labeling for our database fields and also our UI elements. Just best practices with regards to that so it's easy to understand what's actually happening within the application. Then we also have documentation on the APIs, the different data types we have in our application, different plugins and third-party services we have set up and stuff like that. Now back in the Bubble app, what I'll do is just demo what running an admin page looks like. In this admin dashboard, what we have is basic UI and basic database fields pre-set up so that we can start to display core information about this application to any admin that chooses to log into this side of the application, rather than rebuilding this admin dashboard functionality out every time we build an app. And honestly, at least 80% of the apps we build need some sort of admin view. You can see here it's interactive and if any of these things aren't required in the app we build, we can simply delete them. In addition to that, we've got things like the authentication reusable element, which we can drag and drop multiple times throughout our app. Some of the key benefits of having something like this pre-set up each app is we don't need to then go and redo all of the error handling and all those little bugs that happen when users do weird things in the sign up and trigger certain errors and things don't work. What we do is we have this pre-built authentication, which means we can build authentication modules quicker and also there's less bugs. Now you probably think this looks really bland and yes, it does. But what we have this set up with is all of the elements are set up with styles. Now these styles can be set up in the styles tab here and really just think of this as like CSS classes for everything within Bubble. You can define all of your colors that are within your application and you can then use these colors throughout your app. So what we do is we set everything up with these styles and then we can actually design it in Figma which will look completely different. But when we go in here and edit these styles, these then run through to all of the input fields, the buttons and all that kind of stuff to make it look and feel exactly like the Figma design. Now to quickly demo what we're building in Figma, you'll see that these login pages correspond to the login pages that we have set up in this UI kit. 
So what we do when we build in Figma is we obviously use their branding guidelines. So every app's gonna have look and feel different, different fonts, different colors, etc. But what we're going to do is basically redesign these elements to look like that. And then what we can do is actually pre-build a lot of these kind of UI elements in Bubble and it effectively import Figma into Bubble as quickly as possible. This is something that we're aiming to constantly build on the more projects we build. Not only do we think it's really important to have a comprehensive library of UI elements that we can use in the Figma file, but then those should correspond to a large library of UI elements that we can actually use in the Bubble application. Now, as you can tell, you can probably build a template like this out in a bunch of different frameworks. Our agency likes to use Bubble for various reasons, but if you're using some other framework, I'm sure you can take these processes and apply them to whichever framework you build in. I think the key to success in any software development agency really is to try and build static templates for all of the repetitive processes that occur in software. The core of a lot of these products is actually pretty similar, and there's usually 20% of niche cases kind of stuffed on top, but 80% of an app is basic database fields, payment services, authentication, dashboards, etc., etc. The end goal here is to have a Figma file that corresponds to a Bubble UI kit, which allows us to build a lot of these common apps, especially internal dashboards and stuff like that, in as little as four to eight weeks with these templates that have been tried and tested and are genuinely pretty bug free rather than building all of these things custom from the ground up every single time. It's really a win scenario for both parties because not only do the clients get a bug free and quick delivery time, but you also have less headache around customization and all the niche bugs that come with it. If you get this right, you really can deliver a lot of projects in as little as four to eight weeks. Now, if you do build on Bubble, it's worth mentioning that we actually built our framework off of this public framework called Open Build, which already exists out there. So you can go straight to Open Build and actually get a template that's pretty similar to this one from them. So I hope you got more of an understanding of the framework and the process that is actually behind these quick delivery times with low code tools. If you're a developer that builds a lot of apps or you're someone that's looking to build an app and you're just interested in how this process actually works, I hope you got a lot out of this video. I think this really touches on the importance of having a proper development process in place, which helps to standardize and reduce the bugs and also the uniqueness of every app that you build. You obviously don't wanna go overboard with this and start pushing out really generic apps, but things like authentication and things that involve sensitive data, you really wanna have some secure processes on how you build these, because if you do it unique every time, there's more chance that you're gonna leave holes in certain places. So I hope this video justifies how you can actually build and deliver apps in four to eight weeks, and you learn a lot about the app development process that we use and also Bubble as a whole. If you're interested in learning more about freelancing, low code and AI, definitely follow my channel because that's really all that I talk about. Thank you very much for watching this video.